Let's talk about plagiarism and this is one of the very burning topic these days. Recently it was a news because the PhD thesis uh, are being checked with the plagiarism software Turnitin and therefore in India this has come up in light a lot. So let's first discuss briefly what is the difference between plagiarism and copyright. So plagiarism I say is a kind of moral uh, idea where uh, it's a kind of moral binding that a person has. However, under copyright uh, uh, infringement it's a kind of legal enforcement or basically you do not have sufficient legal permissions to produce that work so that's basically copyright copyright falls under legal rights however plagiarism is more to do with moral issues so what is included under plagiarism we say stealing someone's idea uh, Taking someone's quote without naming that person is a kind of copyright, uh, sorry, is a kind of plagiarism. We are using the production of someone else without crediting them. So that's again a kind of plagiarism. Committing literary theft and failing to quote someone as we said. So those are some of the brief ideas what we consider under plagiarism. As we move on to the types, we would understand it in further detail. Now this plagiarism could be deliberate where a person is intentionally trying to copy someone thing or it could be accidental because it is unintentional and somehow it happened the person is unaware about it so that's a kind of basic classification however when we talk about detection techniques under plagiarism we talk about two basic bifurcations so it's text-based and source code text-based is usually usually used for academic purposes however source code is used for computing purposes so let's talk about the tools that are used to detect the text -based Based plagiarism. We'll talk about the types of plagiarism in a while. Let's first talk about the tools which are used to detect those. So PlagAware is a kind of online search engine. PlagScan, you have online software with unique signatures. Check for plagiarism.net is basically a fingerprint based approach. We'll talk about it in a second as we move forward. Authenticate is basically the first online plagiarism checker which has an existence in more than 30 languages now. Uh, PlagiarismDetection.org has its own database. Authenticate would be important as we would understand Turnitin in a while. So those are the tools that we use for text-based detection of plagiarism. Uh, these names are indeed important for your exam. When it comes to source code based tools, we usually have three tools. It is MOS, JPLAG and Code Match. Under MOS, we have the measures for software similarity. Under JPLAG, we are trying to compare programs in pairs. And then you have the Code Match where you are trying to match the code. Now when we are are trying to detect plagiarism there are three methods local similarities text-based similarities and global similarities local similarities means you look on to the local things or certain issues so the most common and under this is fingerprinting so you have kind of small matches or phrases that could be traced out and that is what is fingerprinting however Global similarity means the whole document, you are trying to match it, so the style could be the same, the style of writing could be the same, or you could have the citation that could be a kind of uh, plagiarated, or it could be uh, a citation plagiarism that could be seen. However, between the local and the global, you have term occurrence analysis, and under term occurrence, you try to bring in big phases. So let's say, Substring matching, so you have a kind of uh, sections that are being matched with the other document, so that's substring matching or bag of words, so some important set of words or the keywords from one document would match into the other document, so that is bag of word. So those two are part of term occurrence and they lie between the local and the uh, global basically. Uh, so the local similarity assessment and the global similarity assessment. Coming on to the various types, so source code we all already done with we won't go into details because academic plagiarism is more commonly asked for you so under this we would talk about the textual or the text-based plagiarism let's discuss one by one so you have copy paste exact the same words would be copied into the other document you have paraphrasing i am taking the same phrase once and then i am either changing the changing the language reframing the sentence or I am working on synonym antonym basis. So this paraphrasing could be simple or mosaic. So it could be a kind of patchwork that could be done or it could be simple in the nature. Then you have metaphor that means some other person has 
said something, I am using the same phrase without quoting that person. So that is metaphor plagiarism. Then is idea plagiarism. So the idea of one person is being used by the other person and that's idea plagiarism. Self-recycled plagiarism. I have one paper, I am publishing it into multiple ways. So I am basically doing plagiarism of my own work. So that is self-recycled. 404 errors or illegitimate source code plagiarism says that you took, you plagiarated from somewhere but that does not exist as of now. So it is illegitimate source that you are pointing on to. Retweet basically means someone tweeted something, you retweet it in your name or it's basically kind of uh, social networking, uh, it's mainly common in social networking we can say. So that's the kind of uh, plagiarisms we talk about. Now under this, uh, the degree of detection of plagiarism we talk about the various things so we have the low detection rate and the high detection rate so highest detection rate is seen by substring matching and that is mainly seen in the copy paste plagiarism then you have medium rate that could be detected as disguised plagiarism or copy paste by fingerprinting and bag of words. Stylometry could be used across copy, uh, copy paste, disguised or paraphrase. However, under translation we use Cross-lingual uh, plagiarism detection that is CLPD we will be discussing that in a while or we can have citation based plagiarism detection and this citation based plagiarism detection is also used to detect idea plagiarism because when you are copying the idea the only way you can check it out is through the citation based plagiarism detection. So those are the various types of detections that we talk about. Now detection as we said could be in various ways you could have a monolingual that's in the same language so English to English Hindi to Hindi and so on. Cross-lingual plagiarism detection that means across languages. So it could be English to Chinese, Chinese to Hindi, Hindi to Chinese and so on. So that would be cross-lingual. So I am doing the same document but what I am doing is just changing the language and republishing it again. The next is within the monolingual plagiarism detection we have two types that is intrinsic and extrinsic. Extrinsic means I am trying to compare the existing work, the work that I have done and with the other works that are already present in the repository or the, uh, the documentations. So it's basically through an external reference that I am trying to check it out. However, under intrinsic plagiarism, I have certain writing style that's of my own and that should be similar across all my writings. So what I am trying to do is it's within your own work you are trying to check out whether there is plagiarism or not. So analyzing the writing style or the uniqueness of the author that uh, comes up in every article is something that you check up under the intrinsic plagiarism detection. The next thing as we talked about Turnitin uh, software. So Turnitin is the software that is now being used, used by MHRD, that's the Ministry of Human Resource Development in India, uh, to check out PhD thesis plagiarisms. Now this Turnitin has a parent company which is known as iParadigms. Uh, this runs on an international informational website plagiarism.org and is uh, similar to the services that is being offered by other newspaper editors and uh, the publishers like Authenticate. Uh, two important tools that are used by Turnitin uh, suit is Grademark and Peermark. So Grademark talks about online grading and feedback as to this much percentage is, is being being cop, uh, is being plagued uh, has a plagiarism or not and peer mark talks about the peer review services so those are the two important additional services being provided by Turnitin so that was about plagiarism we'll be coming up with more interesting topics and more similar topics before your examination so stay tuned have a great day ahead